for today's video we're taking a look at a Super Takamar 50mm f1.4 lens made by the Asahi Optical Company somewhere around 1967. I've been looking for one of these lenses for some time. They've got quite a following these days so prices are sometimes quite high compared to some of my other vintage lenses. I finally got this second generation 7 element version. This version is generally more affordable than the earlier 8 element version and my particular example has a damaged filter thread so it was cheaper still. I will be using this lens for video work so I'll want to fix the damage to the front end and we'll take a look at that in a bit. These lenses, like many others made around that time, are slightly radioactive as they use thoriated glass, or in other words the glass contains some thorium which is a radioactive element. The level of radiation is low and you'll need to get very close to the glass with a radiation meter to detect anything more than ambient levels of radiation. As such, these lenses are perfectly safe to use. Maybe you don't want to sleep with one on your pillow for 20 years, but apart from that it should be fine. It would be less good if you ground the glass into a powder and inhaled it. Inside the body your organs would be in direct contact with the radioactive material for a prolonged period and that wouldn't be so great. As a side note, some TIG welding electrodes also contain thorium. You have to grind a point onto your TIG electrodes and during that process you'll be creating a mildly radioactive dust, so it's a good practice to avoid breathing any of that residue in. Anyway, I've drifted slightly off topic there, so back to the lens. One characteristic that many of these vintage radioactive lenses have is that the glass gains a yellowish brown tint over time. You can probably see this when I hold the lens in front of a white background. This yellowing process can be reversed by exposing the lens to ultraviolet light. I haven't decided if I'll do that yet, I think I'll try the lens first before I decide. Moving back to the damage on the filter thread, in many of my other lenses the front bezel can be removed by unscrewing it. There's usually a small grub screw to stop it unscrewing when you don't want it to, but it turns out that on this Super Takamar lens you have to get the front lens ring out and then there are three screws holding the bezel in place, and obviously I can't get the lens ring out because the filter thread is damaged. That's a bit of a shame because I was hoping to remove the bezel before repairing it, that way I could apply heat if necessary to anneal the metal before attempting to straighten it. Anyway, I have a plan for how I'm going to do it. I'm going to make an outer wooden former to go round the bezel and a smaller inner former to tap it back into shape, hopefully without damaging the threads too much, although I do expect to have to reform the threads a little bit. Another concern is that the metal could fatigue and crack, that's why I was hoping to remove the bezel first so I could anneal, or soften, the metal before trying to straighten it. So I've made myself what looks rather like a bird box, and with the front of the lens extended as far forwards as it can go, I can insert the lens into the hole. This ensures that the bezel is supported, and any force I apply to straighten the bezel is transmitted down to the wooden former and doesn't put a strain on the rest of the mechanism. The lens is wedged into position using a suitable piece of wood at the back. Then I can clamp the whole thing down to my bench so it doesn't jump around while I'm working on it. And for the inner former, I've got part of an old hammer handle. This should be a reasonably hard wood and its curve is about the right shape for the job. I've cut the face away at an angle because I don't want any part of that coming into contact with the front element of the lens. Then it's just a case of starting with a gentle tap and stopping to check to see how much effect that's had, then a slightly harder tap and again check to see how we're getting on, followed by a couple more taps, checking each time to make sure we're not going too far. That's got the worst of the damage straightened out, but I need to do a little bit of fine tuning. For this I'm going to use part of an old hickory drumstick. This is quite a nice hardwood, a softwood like pine would just dent rather than actually straightening the bezel. 
As before, I've cut the end at an angle so it can't come into contact with the front element. A few taps with this, again checking the progress after each tap, and it's looking pretty good. So I've now taken the lens out of my wooden former, and I'll try a 49mm step-up ring to see if it will actually fit. And hey presto, it fits. I haven't even had to reprofile the threads at all. To be totally sure, I'm going to try to remove the front lens ring to make sure that will come out okay. You can buy proper rubber friction cones for this job, but I'm using a disc of rubber stuck onto the bottom of a medicine container, which works fine. You just need to keep an eye that the curvature of the bottom of the medicine container can't touch the lens when you're working. Then it's simply a case of using the friction tool to unscrew the lens ring, which comes out just fine. So that's one Super Takamar 50mm f1.4 lens repaired and ready to test. There are other methods for fixing damaged filter rings. I could have used a lens vise. I've got an old Nikkor lens with a damaged filter ring and I'll probably use a lens vise on that one because someone has attempted to fix the lens with a pair of pliers, which has caused more harm than good. I've now had some time to use the lens a little bit, and it's amazingly sharp, even wide open. Most of the following shots were taken wide open at f1.4. This particular shot of a crop was taken in the early morning, with the sun backlighting the subject. I positioned myself so there was a tree behind, providing some lovely bokeh balls. Next, this shot of a crocosmia plant, which was shot from underneath, with the sky providing the background colour. I think the Super Takamar is one of the nicest lenses to focus that I've ever used. It's very bright, which makes locking onto your subject an absolute doddle. I like the texture of this old caravan, with its faded and sun-beaten paintwork. The shallow depth of field makes it really easy to separate the subject from the background. Similarly, this old mechanical calculator has possibly seen better days, but in its decay it's gained some interesting textures and colours. And staying with the decaying theme, your attention is drawn to the word coupe on this old car badge, with the rest of the image gently falling away into a nice soft blur. And finally we have a shot of an old Zeiss Contaflex camera. This shot was taken at f4, and it's just so sharp, while still providing plenty of isolation from the blurred background. You can probably tell that I'm pretty pleased with this lens, and I think it will be spending quite a lot of time on the camera. Having used it for a bit, I probably will de-yellow it at some point, to return it to its, well, more or less original state. I will shoot one of my RT test videos using this lens when I get a chance, but for now I think we've covered what we need to. If you've enjoyed watching, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. There'll be more vintage lens repairs and tests coming soon. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future video.